You're live with David Eads on BBC World News. A tense standoff at the Polytechnic University in Hong Kong. Hundreds of pro-democracy activists are holed up inside. Police fire tear gas and rubber bullets as uh, protesters attempting to escape. The future of Hong Kong, if such situation continues, would be unimaginable, dreadful. Hello. The future of Hong Kong will be unimaginable and dreadful if the situation there goes on. Those are the words of the Chinese ambassador to London uh, speaking just a short while ago as this tense standoff between police and protesters carries on at the Polytechnic University. Well, night has fallen now. This is outside the university uh, as we're reaching dusk. Relative calm descending outside the campus. Very different story, of course, from within. Uh, several hundred people thought still to be inside the building. Some of them are injured, we understand, but this was pre-dawn, uh, the moment the police stormed parts of the university campus, several further arrests made overnight. And then, earlier in the day, more violence as protesters attempted to get out of the campus. At least 50 arrests were made. Um, the clashes then spilled over in the surrounding streets. Uh, Robin Brandt has been following all this for us uh, and joins us now from Hong Kong. Robin, over to you. Well, just half an hour ago, this was a normal dual carriage road taking people home to their families. Now it's been transformed into nothing but congestion. Roadblocks hastily put in place by protesters. The whole place has snarled up. This guy here has just told me he's heading home. There's no chance of getting there anytime soon. The reason is that supporters have come to this area very quickly in large numbers to show their support to the several hundred or so protesters who remain inside Polytechnic University, which is about, I don't know, half a kilometre over that way and they are trying their best as well to a impede the work of the police uh, but also yet again use this tactic of of disruption disruption and obstruction when it comes to roads bridges and infrastructure in hong kong and as you can see it's very very effective now earlier in the day we had uh, this standoff between the police uh, and the protesters the police outside had essentially blockaded the university covering the bridges and roads in and then three or four protesters uh, three or four hundred protesters three or four hundred protesters i should say uh, inside uh, refusing to come out there was a brief moment just before two o'clock when a small group tried to escape and this is what that looked like so it's 1 45 and all of a sudden we hear tear gas and you look down and see a large crowd of protesters they're basically making a run for it i think there must be maybe a hundred of them they came running out over the barriers, a large amount of tear gas fired down in their direction. And this is them escaping, basically. You can hear what the police are doing in response. It looks like most of them have been successful in their escape. I think maybe one or two are being detained and arrested down here by the police. But essentially what the police are doing is firing tear gas at them. And now the protesters are getting over the barriers that they themselves or their friends constructed in the last 48 hours. But this looks like a fairly successful break. Turning into something of a continuum, though, isn't it, in terms of uh, the disruption and this particular incident? And we've heard a lot of dark words said over the last few weeks about what this means for Hong Kong, perhaps being expressed either uh, by the chief executive, Carrie Lam, or indeed by Beijing. But just have a listen to this. This is from the Chinese ambassador to London, Liu Xiaoming, who was speaking just a short while ago. The fragrant harbour is sliding into an abyss of chaos. The future of Hong Kong, if such situation continues, would be unimaginable, dreadful. Very strong words indeed. Let's get back over to Robin, see what you make of that, Robin. I mean, this was obviously partly an effort to talk about don't get involved on an international level. That seemed to be the message coming from Yu Xiaoming. But the suggestion that the, the result could be unimaginable and dreadful, it does feel like it's upping the ante on the rhetoric. Yeah, I mean, Hong Kong remains one of the uh, core concerns for China's 
uh, ultimate leaders, of course, uh, Xi Jinping uh, in Beijing, Hong Kong, Taiwan and Xinjiang, and they consider any kind of intervention here by foreign forces, as they describe them, uh, as being a breach of their sovereignty. I mean, those words, unimaginable, it sounds a little ominous, whether he there is hinting uh, at, you know, kind of economic chaos here, uh, sclerosis almost these protesters could bring about, or maybe he's talking about uh, some kind of intervention that ultimately Beijing may feel is forced upon them. Uh, we just don't know uh, from those comments. I have to say, I think the most interesting thing that's been said this week about Hong Kong didn't happen here. It happened in Brazil, where President Xi Jinping, China's leader, uh, was visiting, and he talked about his continued ongoing strong support for Carrie Lam, Hong Kong's leading politician here, a hugely divisive figure. And he said it was important to act sternly and decisively to put an end to the chaos. Now, they are significant words, the inference being that the government here needs perhaps to do more, be more decisive, be more assertive in trying to essentially end these protests or certainly bring about some kind of de-escalation. Robin, for now, thanks very much indeed. Obviously, the situation is still very much live in Hong Kong. You're live with David Eads. Now, we're going to speak to one of the group uh, who's been inside the uh, Polytechnic buildings in Hong Kong. We've been uh, trying to get hold of Owen for a little while. We've got him now on the line, Owen Lee. Uh, Owen, thank you very much indeed for joining us. J can you just tell us where you are right now? Uh, I'm just outside of the university campus because yesterday, I suppose, uh, in the university campus, and I just instant to instantly go outside to have dinner and the police officer block all the exit and entry and not allow anyone in and out anymore right so, uh, so and luckily after yeah. that sorry to interrupt you, you, are, you yeah, are you trying to get back in then uh i tried but in vain right G give i tried us, but in vain right give us an idea owen as what it has been like from inside, I mean, I imagine now there are a lot of very anxious students who don't know whether they can get out or how they can get out. In a way, you are one of the lucky ones. What is the sense inside the campus now? Uh, as I know, they uh, have their anger, frustration, uh, depression, something like that, and anxiety also. We can find, uh, after they block all the entry and exits, uh, all the police officers not allow them to leave. And later on, the university senior management uh, uh, say that they already negotiate with the police commander. But the police commander uh, just uh, just not keep his promise. And, the, uh, and, and, and when someone go outside from the designated exit and the police officer arrest him or her directly, Right. I mean, the message from the police seems quite clear at the moment. If those students want to come out, they can. They come out peacefully. That is the message. Is that one that they're prepared to listen to? Uh, yes, they can come out peacefully, but the police officer uh, and the government officer, I mean the secretary, uh, sec uh, security sec secretary for... Sorry, the Security Secretary in Hong Kong, uh, I mean the main, uh, main government officer, already tell the public uh, when everyone leaves the Polytechnic University, it would be deemed uh, riot and uh, it would send to court. And the legal consequence would be sent to jail for, more, uh, for 10 years. Right. You, you are clearly in a position where over many, many weeks you have worked out a way to protest and to keep yourselves as safe as possible, it seems on this occasion, effectively, those still on the campus are surrounded. Uh, are, are the authorities getting the better of your own tactics these days? Uh, I would say this is not only about the extradition bill, but also for the fairness and also for the people who would like to fight for democracy freedom, universal suffrage, and as uh, and the most important would be the fairness uh, in, and, and justice in Hong Kong society. You know, the police brutality already very serious, worse and, and deteriorating. And, uh, and the police officer 
did anything, even illegal, they have no legal consequence, and also for the government officer. However, for the protesters, when they got arrested, they will have some un, uh, unfair treat, uh, un, un, unfair, unfair treatment. Just say uh, before they got arrested, the police officer will uh, use the over violence to hurt and and and, and fight and attack the protester, even already arrested. Entirely. Right. We're looking at pictures of um, Hong Kong by the uh, Polytechnic University now. It's, um, it's obviously it's mid-evening. Um, it's dark. Uh, there's not a huge amount going on as far as we can see. But how realistically, how much longer can the, those colleagues of yours, I'm sure there are many friends of yours inside, expect to, to hold out for? Actually, I guess uh, around six. 100 to 700 still in the Polytechnic University campus, but I have really no idea how can it get in because, you know, uh, in the evening, many, uh, I will say this is parents, uh, many adults uh, after their work go outside to try to save the, stu- uh, the students still inside the university campus, and they have already start the war, uh, I mean the start uh, street war and the battle outside to with the police. Therefore, uh, I can't say when will be end or how to be end and go out. Right. Do, do you see this as a staging post, another moment, if you like, in terms of your protest and the authorities' response to you? Uh, at this moment, we don't have any idea about it. As you know, the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region government, government rely on the central uh, central government of China uh, or regard as the Communist Party of China. Therefore, uh, we, 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 I, 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 I would say this is pessimistic. Uh, this is pessimistic that uh, Hong Kong society can fight for universal suffrage, but we should still appreciate for their courage uh, to fight for their freedom, fight for their future. So we should always stand by them, especially uh, for the international society, international society to also appreciate for their effort and they also use uh, the peaceful way, rational way, and also they show their brave uh, to fight for what they yeah. what they, they want. Oh, and, and I'm just going to call a halt family. to the I'm going to call a halt to the interview here because we're just looking at pictures now, which we're going to close on, which to my eyes mm. appear to be some of the. Uh, students possibly trying to find a way out of the campus. We'll leave you with these pictures here on BBC World News, but they are taking risks to get out. Hello, this is Impact, bringing you all the day's top stories and later in the programme, more news in depth. I'm Philippa Thomas. China warns of a dreadful future for Hong Kong after demonstrators at the Polytechnic University are surrounded by police. The future of Hong Kong, if such situation continues, would be unimaginable, dreadful. Look at the scene live from Hong Kong. You can see there students, it seems, trying to escape the besieged campus. So can this standoff be resolved peacefully? I'll be talking live to the head of the University Student Union in just a few minutes' time. Welcome to the programme. We're live for the next 45 minutes and you can always give me your views at Philippa BBC. The future of Hong Kong will be unimaginable and dreadful if the situation continues. Those are the comments from China's ambassador to the UK. Lu Xiaoming was speaking after a violent standoff began at the Polytechnic University. We can show you live pictures from the Polytechnic. Now, if you look at this screen, you see in the bridge, across the bridge, students uh, crowded into that area and shimmying down a rope to try to get out. And then you see them as they come down the rope, running to the right of picture. We've seen mopeds coming in, picking up the students, taking them away. So we've been watching this over the last few minutes. The students coming down in their ones and twos. A few of them seem to have dropped. It's it's a pretty dangerous way to try to get out of the campus precincts. But they clearly have people waiting for them and helping them. 
to try to get out. Uh, our correspondent Robin Brandt has been watching events in Hong Kong through the day. This is a university under siege and at times under attack. This the latest of numerous fires to take hold in the last 24 hours. Outside, the police have surrounded Polytechnic University on bridges and roads. Inside, the protesters are waiting, fearing a repeat of this. In the early hours of this morning, police raided part of the campus. A tense standoff remains, though. Around 500 protesters have barricaded themselves in. Their food and water supplies are running low. They still have petrol bombs and other weapons, though. Just before two o'clock in the afternoon, one group tried to escape. So it's 1.45 and all of a sudden we hear tear gas and you look down and see a large crowd of protesters. They're basically making a run for it. I think there must be maybe a hundred of them. They came running out over the barriers, a large amount of tear gas fired down in their direction. A handful were arrested. The police say anyone leaving the campus will be charged with rioting. I would urge those rioters, do not try to escalate their level of weapon or violence. We have the capability. I will once again urge them to come out, surrender. The focus now, for the university at least, is to end this peacefully. We have now received the assurance of police of a temporary suspension of the use of force under the condition that if the protesters do not initiate the use of force, the police will not initiate the use of force. The standoff continues though and supporters are streaming into the area around here in large numbers to provoke the police and to try to impede them. We heard that the, the student is inside, that they don't have food and no water but they want to get out. This shows no sign of de-escalating, the opposite in fact. And the police are now sandwiched between protesters barricaded inside and their supporters outside on the march again. Robin Brandt, BBC News, Hong Kong. Well, let's take you back to those live shots now outside the Polytechnic University of Hong Kong. Uh, you can still see on the screen uh, across that bridge, there's a rope hanging down there. There appears to be tear gas being fired now. Students have been coming down. We've been watching them over the last 15 minutes or so at least. Tear gas drifting across the bridge, which is where the students have been getting down, picking themselves up and running to get on these mopeds. Still, another student just down there. But we're also looking at the activity to see where the police are coming in. Uh, clearly, it's, it's, a very, it's a very difficult situation. Uh, a lot of students who are trapped inside the Polytechnic, very eager to get out. And we can talk more about that now with Derek Liu, who is president of the Polytechnic University Student Union. Uh, Derek, thanks for joining us. Tell me how many people you think are trapped. Well, in fact, as for my newest figure, around 500, 600 uh, students and staff and for those visitors of the university are trapped are still trapped in the university and they are still using like the best force in order to escape from the barricades which was set by the police force. Tell me about the age of these students because I understand some of them are very young. Yeah, yeah. as I've noticed that from some of the secondary school principals like uh, the youngest one were studying the secondary two of which shall be like uh, age 12 or 13. So you think there are how many students of 12 or 13 years old? Uh, we have no such accurate number, but in total, there are around like 120 to 140 secondary school students altogether in the campus at the moment. And we can see, Derek, on our live pictures, students still basically shimmying down a rope to get off this bridge. What have you been told about the conditions for those still inside? Well, in fact, like as the supply chain is cut off by the police force and the barricades, none of those supplies from the outsiders will, could be able to send into the university, such that they 
only could consume the own their own food, their own beverages before the things uh, ends. What are you hearing about the medical situation? Are there injured students in there, or have they been able to get out? Well, like in yesterday, like a really big fight between the protesters and the police. There are like something like forty something students and staff, or those visitors got hurt. Like three were injured in the ice, and other forties were injured by having a uh, by having being shot by the anti riot vehicles, making them having experiencing the hypothermia. The students who've been on campus and been protesting and pushing back against police, what is their agenda? What do they stand for? Well, in fact, like、uh, when we rolling back to the re、really、first of this、uh, movement, it is because that we strike for freedom, we strike for democracy in Hong Kong. What we strike is only for the five demands that we demand for a really more democratic society and the. Political structure in Hong Kong, and the things come really chaotic because, like somehow, the government and police force has like to、uh, heaten the whole situation by putting excessive forces and unequalized forces opposing those protesters striving for the universal key values. Derek Liu, as you speak, we can hear our viewers can probably hear the sound, the bangs as more tear gas is let off. So these protesters, demonstrators who are on the bridge trying to make their way out, yes, are facing、Round、more tear, tear gas, gas now. Of tear gas, like some of the shocking bombs, and like they use all kinds of possible weapons or to in order to disperse those students. Are being trapped in in the university. Like whenever whenever anybody from the university escapes, they will be charged, being suspected as the rioter, and they have to face like at most ten years of imprisonment. Which is like, will their future will end, and they couldn't see what they will be facing. Derek, you have said we absolutely do not wish to see another June Fourth, referring,、yes. of course. To Tiananmen, nineteen eighty-nine.、Yeah. You've raised that as as a parallel. Is that in your mind? Yeah. It somehow, like when recording those historical images, it is somehow the masquerade with just like tear gas, that's less lethal weapon. But actually, in the few past few days,、uh, bullet guns, like gun bullets, had already been shot to some of the protesters, like in the Quarry Bay last. A、uh, few days or last week. Derek, let me let me、sold. play let me play to you and to our viewers、uh, some of the words from China's ambassador to the UK speaking、yeah. just this morning when he says Beijing will not sit on its hands if this situation becomes uncontrollable. The fragrant harbour is sliding into an abyss of chaos. The future of Hong Kong, if such situation continues, would be unimaginable. Dreadful. Derek Liu, when you hear those words, what do they say to you? Well, in fact, they are just threatening threatening us that somehow they are willing to like recall those Tiananmen massacre in the Hong Kong society if the situation continues. That's why the students trapped inside the campus are still attempting to their best in order to escape from the situation at the moment. And yet, the ambassador has also said these students are a few violent offenders disrupting law and order, trying to destabilize Hong Kong. There is literally a battle going on on campus, but also a battle for for the hearts of people across Hong Kong. Well, in fact, like what we should we call what they're striving? What they're striving is for the future of Hong Kong, which now is a bit of diminished. And in order to get back the image to strike for a better Hong Kong that is in their mind, so they try their best in order to pave the way until the sun come again. Derek Liu, thank you very much for joining us for your interview there. And again, we are、uh, going to be showing.
keep an, keeping an eye on these live pictures, the situation there with students still trying to get away via this bridge. We will be back with our correspondent in Hong Kong uh, very soon. So we'll keep an eye on this fast developing story. Daniela Ralph, do stay with us here on Impact Still to Come. Welcome back to Impact on BBC World News. Let's remind you of our top story this hour. As a violent standoff continues at Hong Kong's Polytechnic University, there's been a warning that the territory's future could be unimaginable and dreadful if the situation continues. This comment from China's ambassador to the UK. Well, we can now go to the BBC's Robin Brandt. Uh, Robin, you've been following the situation through the day in Hong Kong. Tell us about where you are and, and what you know. Well, we are half a kilometre or so from Polytechnic University. We are on the Kowloon side of Hong Kong. That's the bit attached to the mainland, right by the water's edge. And this is what, in the last half an hour, has become a huge show of support for those four or five hundred or so protesters who are holed up tonight for a second night. Thousands of people are descending on this area. Some of them are in smart trousers and skirts and shorts, uh, shirts. rather. They've come from work. As you can see, they are manning supply lines, sending stuff right up to the front line there where they have a confrontation with the police. The chairs are not for sitting on. <laughs> those chairs are going to be used to block the road and we're seeing yet again a very effective use of that tactic by these protesters. They're blocking roads, they're blocking bridges, they're blocking tunnels and that is why uh, they are proving to be so disruptive in their tactics. But this is the biggest show of support uh, I've seen in a good few weeks here. There are clearly several, several thousands of people who've come down to this area tonight. There has been an exchange of tear gas with the police earlier on in the evening uh, about half a kilometre up there. The police managed to open the road but here we are again, uh, it's closed. As I said, all of this is a show of support for the protesters. We've seen some images in the last hour or so I think of another attempt to leave the campus. Uh, some protesters being shown abseiling down some ropes from uh, footbridges. We saw a group try and leave earlier. They were pursued by police but some uh, did manage to escape. Anyone though has been warned by the police that if and when they do eventually emerge, they will be arrested if they're caught uh, and charged with rioting. Robin, the Chinese ambassador here has said today a few violent offenders are disrupting law and order in Hong Kong. But what you're telling me is about a broader uh, swathe of, of people, uh, including office workers, uh, regular uh, citizens, coming out to show their support. Yes, and there's always been those two key elements to uh, this protest. I say movement, uh, but it's very uh, much a broad church. They're leaderless. That's something they continue to tell you when you interview these protesters. Uh, they are large in number in terms of the demonstrators who take over the streets and are often peaceful. I have to say this is a slight escalation in terms of the obstructive uh, tactics in terms of blocking the road. There is definitely a much smaller number, a much more hard cause, almost at the kind of tip of the spear who are responsible for the petrol bombs. Uh, they're responsible for the homemade catapults we've seen on some of the university campuses. They're responsible for the brick throwing uh, as well. So there are two different elements to uh, these protesters. I think what you're seeing here is the two slightly amalgamating because this kind of tactic is extremely obstructive. It's extremely disruptive. But for now, it shows very little chance, I think, of losing any sense of momentum. Here we are on a Monday night at, what, 20 past nine, and there are thousands and thousands of people on the streets uh, to show their concern and to show their support. Robin Brandt, live from Hong Kong, thank you, and we will stay up to date on this story. Well, let's just remind you of our top story, which is the continuing standoff at the Polytechnic University of Hong Kong. To remind you of the pictures that have been coming into us uh, this hour, a lot of students trapped on campus. Uh, you can still see some of them up on the bridge there, and they've been abseiling down from the bridge, running off to the right across this underpass. Uh, mopeds, others coming to meet them, uh, to whisk them away. So obviously sympathisers trying to help get the protesters out of the uh, out of the out of the polytechnic precincts we can also show you a live picture uh, which i think is possibly underneath is very close uh, the students regrouping so let's show you this live picture coming into us now we've seen students um, 
wandering uh, around, meeting each other, pulling things together, uh, many masks still there. Uh, the students refusing to give up in this standoff with the police in Hong Kong. Hello, this is Impact, bringing you all the day's top stories. I'm Philippa Thomas. China warns of a dreadful future for Hong Kong as demonstrators at the Polytechnic University are surrounded by police. The future of Hong Kong, if such situation continues, would be unimaginable dreadful. Within the last few minutes, we've seen students trying to escape by lowering ropes onto a highway below the precincts of the Polytechnic. It's not clear how many students are still trapped on the campus. This is also a scene live from Hong Kong students regrouping as their standoff continues. We return to Hong Kong where a tense standoff between police and protesters continues at the city's Polytechnic University. Uh, demonstrators there have been fleeing the Polytechnic after hours by abseiling down from the bridge over the underpass. You can see them coming down there on a rope and being whisked away uh, by sympathisers, supporters uh, on mopeds. Uh, this after another group of students made a break for it earlier. We think that some of them uh, may have been arrested as they tried to get away from the area. Just to show you some of the live pictures now of the students uh, regrouping, gathering their belongings, uh, coming uh, together, we have also heard from the BBC's Robin Brandt about a large number of sympathisers arriving in the area to try to resupply or help the students who've been involved in this confrontation. Let's hear more from the BBC's Robin Brandt. So it's 1.45 and all of a sudden we hear tear gas and you look down and see a large crowd of protesters. They're basically making a run for it. I think there must be maybe a hundred of them. They came running out over the barriers, a large amount of tear gas fired down in their direction. And this is them escaping, basically. You can hear what the police are doing in response. It looks like most of them have been successful in their escape. I think maybe one or two are being detained and arrested down here by the police. But essentially what the police are doing is firing tear gas at them. And now the protesters are getting over the barriers that they themselves or their friends constructed in the last 48 hours. But this looks like a fairly successful break. Let's go back live to Robin Brandt now, still monitoring events for us. Uh, Robin, a lot of people behind you. Yeah, it's a large number. I would definitely say it's in the uh, several thousands, uh, if not more. Uh, two hours ago, this road here... It's a four-lane carriageway, uh, had traffic running uh, along both sides, people going home. Now there are bricks strewn on it, barriers, plastic and metal have been uh, erected. And there is a front line, essentially, about half a kilometre up there. You can see the blue flashing lights where these protesters are sending supplies up for others to construct barriers. It's yet more evidence of two things. The support that those students and protesters hold up at Polytechnic University maintain among a broader group of sympathisers and also of how effective these groups can be at being so disruptive to Hong Kong's infrastructure. They're blocking a road here. It's half past nine on a Monday night. They've blocked bridges. They've blocked other highways. They've blocked the entrances to tunnels as well. And that, I think, is probably what's having most impact on people's daily lives here. Things are just basically in different areas at different times of the day and night grinding to a halt. What about the presence of Hong Kong police? Well, they're not here at the moment. Uh, they're definitely up there, about half a kilometre away. Uh, we saw riot police move up there to clear the initial blockage. Uh, that was quickly replaced by a further blockage. I mean, the reality is they are frequently outnumbered when you have a show of support on this kind of scale from Hong Kong's people. You have a cat and mouse game going on. And of course, the focus of attention in this specific area is what's going on at the university. That's where most of the police are focused. But uh, as night falls, often, particularly at the weekends in the past, we've had other protests, uh, other events where the police uh, need to be. And so, frankly, 
this just goes on. Robin, thanks for bringing us up to date. We'll keep um, getting the latest from Hong Kong. I just want to remind you of something else that has happened uh, in the last few hours. Here in London, the Chinese ambassador to the UK, uh, Lu Xiaoming, warned other countries against interfering in Hong Kong affairs. Some Western countries have publicly supported extreme violent offenders. The US House of Representatives adopted the so-called Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act to blatantly interfere in Hong Kong affairs, which are China's internal affairs. The British government and Foreign Affairs Committee of the House of Commons published China-related reports making irresponsible remarks on Hong Kong. Well, I'm joined now by Luke de Pulford, who's a human rights campaigner. And Luke, I know you've worked with politicians on all sides at Westminster on Hong Kong. I will come to the role of outside countries. But first, I know you have been talking to some of those trapped inside the Polytechnic. What are you hearing? We're getting really desperate messages, hundreds of them from people within the university and many of those who have come outside to try to support. Those inside the university say that there are still between five and 600 inside the campus. Uh, that it's a deeply desperate situation. They want to get out. They don't want to be fighting with the police, but they feel that they have no choice. There are injuries there. They are saying the emergency... Why do they have no choice on the fighting with the police? Because they feel that the university is their home and that it represents for them human rights, freedom, democracy, freedom of speech, which is under threat. That's what this whole battle for them is about. They're not going to give up their campus and they would rather... And they're even saying that they would rather die than to do so. And that's, I think, representative of the messages that are across Facebook and across the rest of Hong Kong right now, where you're now seeing graffiti coming up all over the city with the dates of Tiananmen Square, with what they expect to be a repeat, unless there is urgent de-escalation of what's going on in Hong Kong. Just uh, we're showing our viewers some live pictures as we speak, Luke. Uh, there's been something of a, a conveyor belt, I think, of, of sympathisers, students and sympathisers, trying to get supplies uh, to those who are inside. What I just heard from the student union leader is he believes there are at least 100 uh, children in there, 12 to 14-year-olds. Absolutely. And this is the thing which I think um, people struggle to understand. The fight that these pro-democracy demonstrators are pursuing is one which has gripped so much of Hong Kong society. They all feel invested in this. So if anybody tries to paint this as a picture of a group of extremists or a couple of people who are the minority throwing petrol bombs, they are not doing justice to the truth of the situation. We do hear, though, from the ambassador, as we have today. He said this is a few violent offenders. It's being, it's, he said it has nothing to do with justice or democracy. He says this doesn't represent Hong Kong. Well, I mean, I suppose that if he and Carrie Lam's administration had bothered to engage with the protesters, they would find differently. They have huge popular support. I think what today has shown, the call that went out to get people to rally around the university went out very, very early this morning and look at how many thousands have turned up to try to help, knowing full well the risks. They know that if they're detained as one of the protesters, they may face up to 10 years in prison under new ordinances. This is very, very serious offences that they're risking. It feels like an existential struggle for a lot of people. It really does. And I think it, um, it, no, nobody more so than the people who are stuck inside that university, whose parents and whose Families and loved ones have been leaving desperate messages to plead, them, to plead with them to leave the campus. Just briefly, I know this is hard. What is the responsibility of the UK in particular, the former colonial power, with the Chinese saying we do not want any external interference? Well, I just don't understand what Liu Xiaoming is saying, given the fact that we signed a joint declaration with China, which is very clear that we have a responsibility to the people of Hong Kong to uphold a high degree of autonomy, human rights and their way of life. That is what they are defending, and that's what they feel is under threat. I don't see how any outsider, and this goes for the whole international community, not just the UK, I don't see how any outsider could look at what's going on in Hong Kong and argue anything other than what we're seeing is a slow, well, even now a very rapid degradation in those rights and that autonomy. So when you hear from the Chinese ambassador a stark warning saying um, of 
Congress, for example, uh, that it's blatantly interfered, saying that the Houses of Parliament, where, where you're uh, active, is making irresponsible remarks. The Chinese are not shy of using their international power, their heft here, to say, stand off. Yes, and that's what's so deeply worrying. I mean, the one bit of his statement that we would all agree with is that we want to see an end to this violence. Those demonstrators feel that they have been pushed to this. We had month after month of peaceful protest, but nothing happened because Carrie Lam's administration were not willing to engage and listen to the very reasonable demands of the protesters. They wanted to see police brutality investigated. They wanted to see the promises that were made to them in the Hong Kong Basic Law honoured, that promise for universal suffrage. We're nowhere near that. We're going the other way. We're nowhere near that. We are going the other way, and we're continuing to watch what's happening on the streets of Hong Kong right now. Luke de Paulford, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Hello, this is Impact, bringing you all the day's top stories, and later in the programme, more news in depth. I'm Philippa Thomas. China warns of a dreadful future for Hong Kong as protesters at the Polytechnic University are surrounded by police. The future of Hong Kong, if such situation continues, would be unimaginable dreadful. Within the last hour, we've seen students escaping from the besieged campus by abseiling down onto a highway below. It's not clear how many are left inside. Can this situation be resolved peacefully? And what's happening to the students who get out? We're talking to the student union president at the Polytechnic. Welcome to the programme. We're live for the next 30 minutes and you can always give me your views at Philippa BBC. The future of Hong Kong will be unimaginable and dreadful if this situation continues. Those are the comments from China's ambassador to the UK. Lu Xiaoming was speaking after a violent standoff at the Polytechnic University where students trying to leave have been met with tear gas and rubber bullets. This is how they've been trying to escape over the last hour. We've been watching students sliding down a rope from this bridge onto the road where they've run along and been picked up by people on motorbikes. Uh, we can also show you live pictures uh, from outside. This is close by. Uh, students forming these human chains. Uh, we have seen what looked like bricks passed along the chains. Uh, and students have also been trying to help with supplies and medical aid to protesters uh, getting out. Our correspondent, Robin Brandt, just sent us this update from the scene. The supporters of the 500 or so protesters who are holed up in the Polytechnic University called for others to take to the streets tonight to show their support. And this is what's happened. In the last couple of hours or so, thousands and thousands of people, most of them are young, have descended onto this area of Kowloon and they have taken over the streets. It's peaceful, but it is highly disruptive. And it's another sign of the tactics they're using to convey their message to the people of Hong Kong and frankly, to disrupt day-to-day -day, day -day lives. There are bricks on the streets. We have seen highways blocked and we have seen the entrances to tunnels closed as well. All of this is a show of support for the protesters who are holed up for a second night now at the university, which is about half a kilometre in that direction. We have seen some images of a small handful of them trying to leave, uh, uh, abseiling down ropes from footbridges. That's after a larger group that we saw escaping at about two o'clock uh, this afternoon. All of them know, though, that they will likely face arrest and the police have warned them that anyone leaving is likely to be charged uh, with rioting. This is peaceful, but it is highly disruptive. What we're seeing in the university has been far more aggressive and far more threatening, both by the police, but also by a hardcore of protesters who've been using petrol bombs and bricks as well. Each side is basically blaming the other, but there is little sign at the moment uh, of the standoff at the university uh, de-escalating. Well, near Robin Brandt, we have the live images here from the streets of Hong Kong and a human chain there 
with supplies being passed along. We have seen uh, bricks being passed uh, by students, but I think what they're passing along now is actually supplies. There seem to be bottles uh, trying to get food and water to students trapped inside because they've been there for hours. Let's get you the latest uh, from Derek Liu, who is president of the Polytechnic University Student Union. Uh, Derek, I know you're watching this minute by minute, really, not just hour by hour. What's the latest? Yeah, thank you for inviting me again in this hour of your show. And now the situation outside is changing from time to time that uh, some of our students uh, managed to escape from the campus, but while some of them were get caught, as like more than 100 police, right, and there were police were set along the road, like blocking the cars from continue paving the way to the freedom. So what's happening to those students? Do you think they're being arrested as they get out? Well, we could only believe that they would be arrested after such uh, escape. And we're afraid that those who were driving with so-called parents' car, that is to transport them to the other area of, the Hong, of Hong Kong, would also be charged by assisting them to, uh, such, to be such rioters. And what do you think is happening when we see these pictures of the mopeds picking students up as they drop by rope down onto the bridge? Well, in fact, while seeing the images, it is really sad for us that even in these hours, after a day and more, none of for those officials from the government or the official from the school were able to enter the campus area to seek for students. None of them were present in on face to students and to address the concern that they were trapped in the university. And they have not even tried hard to negotiate between themselves and the police force in order to make a safe pay a safe way for those students escaping from the university. So Derek Liu, what you're telling me is that the students inside feel abandoned? And there are still students trapped yeah. in there. Yeah, they, they're just feeling abandoned and despair that they couldn't actually manage to leave the campus. Whenever they attempt to leave, they will somehow be arrested like some way after they escape from the campus. And at every point of the escape, so they would be just so afraid and like, it is just unwilling for us to see such sins in this, in this light, in these days, like in this such liberty days that everyone should leave in full democracy while at the same time we doesn't have it at the moment. So that is why that he was still struggling hard in order to get them and in, in order to tell people all around the world that what we are striving for is not uh, something that is swallow and we are not embraces. But in fact we are those who are fighting for the future of Hong Kong, fighting for a better future that we could see, the foreseeable future that everyone shall uh, treat it well and having their picture in, in the mind. Derek, stay with us because I want to remind our viewers that while you are talking about fighting for the future of Hong Kong, we are hearing different lines from the Chinese. The Chinese ambassador here in the UK has said today, Beijing will not sit on its hands if the situation which he describes as the work of, of violent protesters becomes uncontrollable. The fragrant harbour is sliding into an abyss of chaos. The future of Hong Kong, if such situation continues, would be unimaginable, dreadful. Well, Derek, what do you make of that, those words and the intentions behind them? Well, we already like afraiding for the students still trapped inside. Those may be facing a massacre, and we do not want anyone from the university or anyone who are staying in your, in the university to be faced with those charges and to have the future laws in order to strike for what they want. And it is actually their willing and the willingness in order to like. Uh, well, such behavior and like the really fundamental reason for those is China. China make this to happen. They impose the force in order to make 
all the Hong Kong people being obligating to their own uh, to their own means of life, and they couldn't defend the so-called one country two system or such the lies that make to the Hong Kong people before the handovering. Derek Liu, thank you very much for coming back to us to update us here on Impact. Welcome back to Impact on BBC World News. Let's remind you of our top story this hour. Still developing. Students trapped in a standoff with police at Hong Kong's Polytechnic University have been abseiling onto a highway below, uh, trying to get out without being arrested. As protests continue across Hong Kong, China's ambassador to the UK has given a warning that the territory's future could be unimaginable and dreadful if this situation continues. Now, he also warned other countries, the US and the UK in particular, against interfering in Hong Kong affairs. Some Western countries have publicly supported extreme violent offenders. The US House of Representatives adopted the so-called Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act to blatantly interfere in Hong Kong affairs which are China's internal affairs. The British government and Foreign Affairs Committee of the House of Commons published China-related reports making irresponsible remarks on Hong Kong. Well, I'm joined by our reporter, Vincent Nee. And we've heard very strong comments there saying unimaginable, dreadful future for Hong Kong if this continues. Yes, indeed. I mean, this is not the first time that the Chinese ambassador posted to London has issued a warning as such. Um, I think what the Chinese ambassador is trying to achieve is to build a narrative that these people are just vandals, they are lawbreakers, and you know, also trying to have the sympathy from the international society. And yet, when you, when I spoke to the um, the Polytechnic um, Student Union president a short time ago, quoted these remarks to him, he started talking about Tiananmen Square. Yeah, he started to talk about Tiananmen Square. I mean, for anyone who have remem- who has remembered what happened 30 years ago, this is a very similar situation. However, I think you know China would think twice before they really deploy. PLA and the tanks rolled out to Hong Kong because the reputational and the political damage to China would be too stark. So I think you know, China will take that as a last result. However, because China now frames this as a part of the uh, territorial integrity, so any attempt to uh, destroy the territorial integrity, i.e. separating Hong Kong from being part of China, will be uh, dealt with with absolute uh, uh, force. I think you know, we shouldn't rule out China's uh, ultimate uh, uh, possibility of you know, sending out PLA uh, armies. However, as I said, this will be a very last result. And of course, the narrative is different in, in yeah. the, the two parts, uh, obviously, because in Hong Kong, they talk about Tiananmen Square. It is remembered every year, not so on the mainland. So how do you think uh, mainland Chinese are, are seeing remarks like this from President Xi, from his ambassadors, saying this is the work of a few violent people, terrorists? I think a lot of people in mainland China do agree with what the government said, because territorial integrity is really at the heart of China's patriotic education, if I may put it. Um, and a lot of people growing up in China were taught that uh, Hong Kong is part of China. Since 1997, Hong Kong was returned from the British uh, Empire to the Chinese rule. And I rule. suppose they'll be seeing images of, say, students with the flaming bow and arrow, exactly. uh, petrol bombs. Right. They think maybe they are scared by the images they're being seen. Yes, seeing. you know, stability is the uh, you know, utmost uh, to the um, uh, Chinese life. And also a few days ago, we saw this a pro-Beijing man being doused with petrol and then set on fire. You know, these are all stark images going to mainland China and a reminder to people that how chaotic it is in China. And also for the government, it's an opportunity to remind people that Hong Kong should be a part of China and any attempt to separate Hong Kong from mainland China will result in chaos. Two different systems, two different narratives. Vincent, exactly. Thank you. Hello, this is Impact, bringing you all the day's top stories. Later in the programme, more news in depth. I'm Philippa Thomas. China warns of a dreadful future for Hong Kong as protesters at the Polytechnic University are surrounded by police. The future of Hong Kong, if such situation continues, would be unimaginable, dreadful. 
As night has fallen, we've seen students escaping from the besieged campus by abseiling down onto a highway below. It's not clear how many people are left inside. We have, though, one of those protesters on the line, and we'll be talking live with them in just the next few minutes. Welcome to the programme. We're live for the next 30 minutes and you can always give me your views at Philippa BBC. The future of Hong Kong will be unimaginable and dreadful if the situation continues. Those are the comments from China's ambassador to the UK. Liu Xiaoming was speaking after a violent standoff at the Polytechnic University where students trying to leave have been met with tear gas and rubber bullets. Well, this is how they've been trying to escape over the last two hours. We have watched students in their ones and twos sliding down a rope onto the road where they've been picked up by sympathisers on motorbikes. Well, I'm joined from Hong Kong, from the Polytechnic, by one of the protesters inside. Uh, we can't use your real name. We're going to call you Tom. You're on campus and you're in hiding. Yes, I'm hiding in the PolyU, the campus. Tom, how many people do you think are still inside? Um, I think uh, there's uh, well, uh, around 100 students are still inside our, in our campus right now. Have you tried to get out? Uh, I have tried to get out in this afternoon. Um, we have tried to get out from campus uh, for four times. Um, the Hong Kong police is stopping us from, li from leaving the campus in PolyU. Um, they used their rubber bullets and tear gas to stop our movement and force us to get back um, into the campus of PolyU. So it is the police who are trapping you inside. What, what state are you in? Describe what it's like for you and your fellow students. Um, our students is just like in a disaster. Um, because um, the police is stopping us our, all the supplies, just like the medical supplies, the food supplies, um, we, get, we only get the water um, in our campus, but we don't get uh, enough food and medicine for our students. You must be pretty scared. Yes, I'm, I must be. <laughs> I, I am pretty scared right now because um, in the last night in Hong Kong, um, the police said um, they will use the daily weapon um, to make us to um, log, um, log in the campus uh, anymore. They will use the daily weapon to um, kill us all. When Just you like hear, that. sorry, Tom, when you hear Chinese diplomats like the ambassador here in the UK saying things could become unimaginable and dreadful. What do you think he's saying to you? Pardon? When you hear the ambassador, the Chinese ambassador, is saying the situation in Hong Kong could become unimaginable, it could be dreadful, what do you think he is saying to you and to other protesters? Um, I think it's a, thing, it's a threat for our protesters because um, um, it's, uh, it's about our life, um, you know, um, Um, <sighs> um, it's about our future, uh, our society. Um, if uh, if we are dead in Hong Kong, um, our society is being broken. Um, there are no more freedom in Hong Kong society. Um, and Tom, you're trapped there. You're not alone. I can hear. What do you think is going to happen to you? What's the things to happen to us? Um, I think the police will come in and will arrest us all. Or if we if we um, if we struggle from them, and they might will open the uh, open the gun, uh, open the fire to us um, to prevent us to get out into get out from the campus. So have you decided what you're going to do there? You you said you can't get out. What are you going to do? 
um, I decided to hide in the hide hide in the campus um, until the police to um, get out from our um, get out from around our campus. Um, if they are leave, and that means we are safe. Do you think you have to wait and hide to save your life? Um, yes, because I have seen the I have seen the live stream on uh, right now in the Hong Kong streets. Uh, the Hong Kong police are still using their rubber bullets and tear gas to shoot on the protest protesters. So I think um, I, I think hiding is the best um, situation for us to use. And Tom, just for our viewers who are listening to your words around the world. Tell us, how long have you been political? How, how much has this, 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 this struggle mattered to you over the last few years? Uh, the last few years? Um, I, I can I, I, don't understand, I don't understand. Do you think you've always been political or do you think that things have really changed for you recently? Um, I think it's uh, political, yeah. You and your, and your fellow protesters. Um, one other thing I want to check with you, uh, Tom, the age of people who are in there with you, are there some young students as well? Yes, um, the protesters included the uh, secondary school students and the university students. Uh, most of them are the teenagers and they come out and shout out from uh, shout out for the freedom, um, but the police, but the Hong Kong police are still using their guns to shoot on our teenagers. Tom, thank you for speaking to us. As I say, we're not going to say where exactly you are. We know you're on campus and you're keeping yourself out of sight. Thank you for giving us your side of the story from inside the Polytechnic. Well, as tensions escalate, China's ambassador to the UK, we've been talking about some of his words, has said Beijing will not sit on its hands if this situation becomes uncontrollable. The fragrant harbour is sliding into an abyss of chaos. The future of Hong Kong, if such situation continues, would be unimaginable, dreadful. And there's a lot more on the BBC Online. We have a live page running with constant updates from Hong Kong. Welcome back to Impact on BBC World News. A reminder of our top story this hour. Students trapped in a standoff with police at Hong Kong's Polytechnic University have been abseiling onto a highway below to try to escape without being arrested. In just the past few minutes, we've been told by one protester hiding inside that around 100 people are still there and scared for their lives. Well, our correspondent Robin Brandt sent us this update from the scene. The supporters of the 500 or so protesters who are holed up in the Polytechnic University called for others to take to the streets tonight to show their support. And this is what's happened. In the last couple of hours or so, thousands and thousands of people, most of them are young, have descended onto this area of Kowloon and they have taken over the streets. It's peaceful, but it is highly disruptive. And it's another sign of the tactics they're using to convey their message to the people of Hong Kong and frankly to disrupt day-to-day -day li -day lives. There are bricks on the streets, we have seen highways blocked and we have seen the entrances to tunnels closed as well. All of this is a show of support for the protesters who are holed up for a second night now at the university which is about half a kilometre in that direction. We have seen some images of a small handful of them trying to leave, uh, uh, abseiling down ropes from footbridges. That's after a larger group that we saw escaping at about two o'clock uh, this afternoon. All of them know, though, that they will likely face arrest, and the police have warned them that anyone leaving is likely to be charged uh, with rioting. This is peaceful, but it is highly disruptive. What we're seeing in the university has been far more aggressive and far more threatening both by the police but also by a hard court of protesters who've been using petrol bombs and bricks as well. Each side is basically blaming the other but there is little sign at the moment 
uh, of the standoff at the university uh, de-escalating. Hong Kong's battleground, the political stakes rise again, and so does the violence. Clashes on campus, students using petrol bombs, bricks and bow and arrows, police using rubber bullets and tear gas. A warning from China, Beijing will not sit back if the situation becomes uncontrollable. Some students make dangerous escapes as riot police surround the university and the standoff continues. Also on Global, this is Global. Hello and welcome to the programme. Each week is more violent than the last. Hong Kong has seen another day of battles between police and protesters, with hundreds of students barricaded inside the Polytechnic University and riot police surrounding the campus. Well, these are the dramatic pictures from just a few hours ago. Some of the students trying to escape, clambering down ropes, jumping on mopeds. The police have condemned the demonstrators for using petrol bombs, bricks and bow and arrows. They've responded with rubber bullets and tear gas. Robin Brandt reports now from Hong Kong. This is a university under siege and at times under attack. This is the latest of numerous fires to take hold in the last 24 hours. Outside, the police have surrounded Polytechnic University on bridges and roads. Inside, the protesters are waiting, fearing a repeat of this. In the early hours of this morning, police raided part of the campus. A tense standoff remains, though. Around 500 protesters have barricaded themselves in. Their food and water supplies are running low. They still have petrol bombs and other weapons, though. Just before 2 o'clock in the afternoon, one group tried to escape. So it's 1.45 and all of a sudden we hear tear gas and you look down and see a large crowd of protesters. They're basically making a run for it. I think there must be maybe a hundred of them. They came running out over the barriers. A large amount of tear gas fired down in their direction. The handful were arrested. The police say anyone leaving the campus will be charged with rioting. I would urge those rioters, do not try to escalate their level of weapon or violence, we have the capability. I will once again urge them to come out, surrender. The focus now, for the university at least, is to end this peacefully. We have now received the assurance of police of a temporary suspension of the use of force under the condition that if the protesters do not initiate the use of force, the police will not initiate the use of force. The standoff continues, though, and supporters are streaming into the area around here in large numbers to provoke the police and to try to impede them. We heard that the, the student is inside, that they don't have food and no water, but they want to get out. This shows no sign of de-escalating, the opposite, in fact. And the police are now sandwiched between protesters barricaded inside and their supporters outside on the march again. Robin Brandt, BBC News, Hong Kong. Well, China's ambassador to the UK has said Beijing will not sit back if the situation in Hong Kong gets uncontrollable. He also condemned Britain for taking sides in this long-running dispute. The fragrant harbour is sliding into an abyss of chaos. The future of Hong Kong, if such situation continues, would be unimaginable, dreadful. 
Well, let me just uh, show you the live pictures uh, coming to us uh, from Hong Kong because uh, the standoff, uh, well, that has been going on for hours after the violent scenes we saw in Robin's piece just a short while ago. Uh, just uh, difficult to make out. It is night time there, but this standoff has been going on now for hours with hundreds of those students barricaded inside the Polytechnic University. They've been ordered to surrender by police, but no sign of that, although we have seen uh, some of those students clambering down the ropes to try to lose and uh, get away from police. Uh, more on that uh, here in the next few minutes because we'll speak to a student who's currently inside that university campus. We'll also look at what action the international community should be taking. Now, let's take a look at the day's other main global stories. And a 15-year-old girl has died after a suspension bridge collapsed in southern France. Two more people are missing after at least three vehicles plunged around 20 metres into the River Tarn, north of Toulouse. Local authorities say the bridge was renovated 16 years ago. The United Nations says more than 7 million children worldwide are being held in detention in institutions, immigration centres, police custody and prisons. In a new report it says children with mental health issues or disabilities are disproportionately affected. And Iranian officials say 12 people have been killed in three days of protests triggered by a steep rise in petrol prices. Other sources suggest the number of dead is higher. So let's return to our main story, the situation in Hong Kong. Another day of terrible scenes and violence, this time centred around the Polytechnic University, where hundreds of students are barricaded inside, surrounded by riot police. Uh, the police have told the protesters to surrender. Well, uh, joining me now is one of the protesters from inside that university. Uh, uh, thank you for being with us here on the programme. Um, apologies to viewers for the pictures, but uh, it is a very, very tense situation. Uh, just give me an idea of what the last 12, 24 hours has been like inside of there. I mean, I have been trapped with my friend and uh, all those students, first A, and all those media trapped inside the uh, uh, the Polytechnic University for more than 30 hours. And our situation is we don't have the gas supplies and all those food is running out inside the canteen. I'm saying in the canteen. So uh, we cannot go and then we are trapped inside. That is an uh, unreasonable situation done by the police. Um, we've seen some students trying to escape. Have you tried yeah. to get away? Uh, in the morning, I have tried, but they they shoot those tear gas and uh, rubber bullet to force us to go back to the to the campus, and mm. we cannot escape. You talked about uh, the police tactics, but we've seen students using petrol bombs, bow and arrows, bricks. I mean, uh, it's right. Can you blame the police for using rubber bullets and tear gas faced with with all of that? I mean, uh, all those is all those action is uh, starting from the uh, peaceful uh, protest, peaceful demonstration in Hong Kong. But later then, because the police force, uh, we don't have uh, the we don't have a, a, com a committee to to watch out the police uh, force, and then which give us um, which force us to increase our, our power. I mean. Although we do, but I mean the police is is real time. I mean, let me ask you a, a final question because China has been warning they won't sit by if Hong Kong becomes uncontrollable. How long are you prepared to stay in the university? Uh, the police have been saying you must surrender. Will you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, I wouldn't surrender. Because I would rather stay in here with all my brothers. Because surrender is not us. is 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 a humanitarian crisis in in Hong Kong done by the police. So many, so many hurt and killed is 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 nonsense. So we will never surrender. Just one sentence. Are you scared? 
yeah, actually, I'm scared. I'm, I'm still studying in university. I should be able to, to hang out with my girlfriend to, to study and, and chill, but, but we can't. We just want to fight for freedom, you know. And right now, I don't know, I don't know where to go, you know. I've been trapped here for almost 40 hours, and, and there's no, 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 no food, not enough food, and there's no people uh, for those supplies, you know. Well, look, there we have to leave it, but thanks for joining us live on today's global programme. Uh, that just one student among the hundreds still barricaded inside that university campus. Well, let's continue to look at uh, the situation there, look at the international ramifications. Let's speak to Baroness Natalie Bennett, who's the co-chair of the UK parliamentary group Westminster Friends of Hong Kong. Baroness Bennett, welcome here to the programme. How alarmed are you by the events we've been watching over the last 24 hours? I think very, very disturbing. And I think we have to think of that protester we've just been hearing from and the many hundreds of others. And one of the reports I saw today was, was parents of estimated 100 school children, high school students who were there in those conditions. And the parents, of course, are terrified for, for their, their safety of their children. And they, you know, many of us around the world are seeing our young people out on the streets as climate strikers. There in Hong Kong, we're seeing the same demographic group, the young people, they're fighting for the most sort of basic dem democratic rights. And and freedoms that they have the right to expect. China's foreign ministry said earlier in the day, no one should underestimate China's will to safeguard its sovereignty and Hong Kong's stability. How ominous uh, would you say warnings like that are? And, and what should the international community be doing, do you think? Well, I think we have particularly in Britain, have a particular responsibility. We're parties to the joint declaration with China. That was something that was registered with the UN. It's an international treaty. We have responsibilities to stand up for the people who we handed over to Hong Kong all those years ago. Um, that agrees the one country, two systems arrangement. It's supposed to guarantee the rights of the people in Hong Kong, which are clearly you know, now under extreme threat. And in terms of the actual situation, I mean, there's a level of fear. I'm getting people contacting me all the time both through social media, by email. And you know, they're deeply fearful. The kind of echoes of things, you know, the word Tiananmen, of course, keeps coming up again and again. And last night there was real fears about the potential that the Chinese army could be on the streets, could be attacking the Polytechnic University. Um, and there really is a responsibility for the whole international community, for the UK in particular, to speak up and say this is not acceptable behaviour. Except now, the Chinese, every time uh, the UK uh, does uh, inch towards that or makes a comment, uh, they are irritated, they remind the UK this is Chinese territory. You talked about your concerns. It's interesting, I was reading among some of the protesters, they cite what is happening to the Uyghurs in China as part of the reason why they're not prepared to surrender, because if they do surrender now, they think that's where they end up. Well, there's huge fear. I mean, you, there's reports of up to a million people, Uyghurs, the Muslim minority, um, you know, who've locked up in re-education camps. T tales of you know, relatives from Western countries who are saying you know, relatives have just disappeared in China. There's no reports on where they are. They can't go to authorities, you know, do all the usual things you do, go to hospitals, go to the authorities, say, where are my relatives? Um, and people are just disappearing. And you know, we've also seen, I'm hearing lots of reports out of Hong Kong, um, there's a great deal of fear that very many unexplained apparent suicides. Bodies are being found on the streets and in apartment blocks in Hong Kong. And so the fear is absolutely well founded and understood. Uh, and I think we have to think that um, you know, this is a situation where the young people who are saying we want the rights we're supposed to be guaranteed by an international treaty, a treaty that Britain is a signatory to. Britain has every right to be speaking yep. out here and every responsibility to be speaking out. Natalie Bennett, we have to leave it there. But uh, thanks for joining us on the programme. Thank you. Hong Kong's battleground, the political stakes rise again, and so does the violence. <laughs> Clashes on campus, students using petrol bombs, bricks and bow and arrows. The police respond with rubber bullets and tear gas. A warning from China, Beijing will not sit back if the situation becomes uncontrollable. Some students make dangerous escapes as riot police surround the university and the standoff continues. Also on Global, this is Global.
Welcome back to our programme and let's return straight away to our top story, the sparring violence in Hong Kong. Today's battleground centred around the Polytechnic University with hundreds of students barricaded inside and the campus surrounded by riot police. It is now the tensest of standoffs. China has warned Beijing will not sit by if Hong Kong becomes uncontrollable. Robin Brand has been watching the clashes. The supporters of the 500 or so protesters who are holed up in the Polytechnic University called for others to take to the streets tonight to show their support. And this is what's happened. In the last couple of hours or so, thousands and thousands of people, most of them are young, have descended onto this area of Kowloon and they have taken over the streets. It's peaceful, but it is highly disruptive. And it's another sign of the tactics they're using to convey their message to the people of Hong Kong and, frankly, to disrupt day-to-day -day li -day lives. There are bricks on the streets. We have seen highways blocked and we have seen the entrances to tunnels closed as well. All of this is a show of support for the protesters who are holed up for a second night now at the university, which is about half a kilometre in that direction. We have seen some images of a small handful of them trying to leave, uh, uh, abseiling down ropes from footbridges. That's after a larger group that we saw escaping at about two o'clock uh, this afternoon. All of them know, though, that they will likely face arrest, and the police have warned them that anyone leaving is likely to be charged uh, with rioting. This is peaceful, but it is highly disruptive. What we're seeing in the university has been far more aggressive and far more threatening, both by the police, but also by a hard court of protesters who've been using petrol bombs and bricks as well. Each side is basically blaming the other, but there is little sign at the moment uh, of the standoff at the university uh, de-escalating. Well, that was Robin Brandt. Uh, joining me now is Aidan Marzo, a Hong Kong-based photojournalist. He joins me on the phone. And Aidan, thanks so much for being uh, here on the programme. Tell me what you have witnessed, you've seen and photographed through the course of the last 24 hours. Yeah, so I got there about uh, midday yesterday. I've just seen absolutely incredible levels of violence, you know, unprecedented in the past couple of months of the protests. I mean, we have seen petrol bombs before, but not at this scale. And not at this, you know, this size. I mean, they've, they've constru protesters have constructed these incredible catapults and slingshots that have been able to hurl these Molotov cocktails and stones, you know, 40, 50 meters from the roof of the campus down to the ground. So uh, it's getting quite violent out there. We're seeing some of your pictures uh, on the screen at the moment. Uh, and uh, exactly as you described, we're seeing just some of uh, the injured people as well. Just uh, give me an idea of what it was actually like inside that Polytechnic University, because at different stages it seemed to ebb and flow with the police trying to get in, trying to make arrests, and then the protesters pushing back. Definitely. There was definitely an ebb and flow. I mean, to begin with, I would say morale was pretty pretty high. They had the high ground, and they were keeping the, the, the police at bay for quite a while. But over time, the police slowly started, you know, cornering off each exit and began trapping the protesters inside. And the, the, the battle waged on, you know, late into the night until about, you know, 5, 6 um, a.m. when the protesters were tired. And that's when the police charged and made those arrests and really got close to the entrance of the gate. And that's when the protesters set humongous fires, you know, just st st trying to stop um, any way the police can enter the, the um, the campus and inside the the medical areas within the campus you saw protesters with bruises with burns with absolutely every type of injury and it was quite sad to see um and quite heartbreaking to see as well because many of them were young students yeah. under 18 um even some as young as 12. We also saw in the last couple of hours some students trying to escape, uh, abseiling down ropes uh, from the bridge onto mopeds because uh, at different stages the police had said to the students, if you give yourselves up, then perhaps uh, uh, they can go free. But uh, what, what are you seeing and hearing in terms of people being arrested or not arrested? To be honest, it seems that there's been a lot of miscommunication both among the police and the protester side and those who try to be intermediaries between them. Um, and it seems that the, the police are willing to let some people pass, but not others. And it's quite often hard to say when the truth has been called, because although it may be called, the people on the ground don't really know that, um, especially given that the protest movement is leaderless. So it's been quite hard to 
disseminate that information among all the masses. Um, so we've seen protesters attempt to, you know, like you said, rappel down ropes and get on, on mopeds and bikes. And we've also seen them try just to, to run their way out. And many of them have been arrested, but luckily, or uh, luckily, but a few of them have been able to escape. We're looking at more pictures now of uh, some of the clashes, the tear gas, the many, many, many volleys that have been fired. I mean, how do you see this actually ending? You've been talking to those protesters, those students. You know uh, if they're prepared to, to, to see this out. How do you see this ultimately coming to an end? I think it's a really tough question to say. There are, there are different groups within the protesters that have different ideas on what they want to do. I think there are a group that are willing to, you know, fight to the end. They may be the more hardcore pro protesters, but there are also some that are hiding within the building, within these different classroom, class, classrooms and various um, offices on, on the campus. And there are simply those who will just try to flee and, you know, give it their best shot. Um, but I think ultimately the police have locked down all supply routes into the campus. Um, food and water, are, I'm sure, are now on short supply. And it's getting tougher to just hunker down there. So it may get to a point where protesters have no choice but to come out and just surrender. Well, there we have to leave it. Aidan Marzo, uh, thanks so much for joining us uh, on today's programme, live here on Global. Hong Kong's battleground. The political stakes rise again, and so does the violence. <laughs> Clashes on campus, students using petrol bombs, bricks and bow and arrows. The police respond with rubber bullets and tear gas. A warning from China, Beijing will not sit back if the situation becomes uncontrollable. Some students make dangerous escapes as riot police surround the university and the standoff continues. For me, I wouldn't surrender because I would rather stay in here with all my brothers. Also on Global, this is Global. Hello and welcome to the programme. Each week is more violent than the last. Hong Kong has seen another day of battles between police and protesters with hundreds of students barricaded inside the Polytechnic University and riot police surrounding the campus. Well, these are the dramatic pictures from a couple of hours ago. Some of the students trying to escape, clambering down ropes, jumping on mopeds. The police have condemned the demonstrators for using petrol bombs, bricks and bow and arrows. They've responded with rubber bullets and tear gas. Robin Brandt reports now from Hong Kong. This is a university under siege and at times under attack. This the latest of numerous fires to take hold in the last 24 hours. Outside, the police have surrounded Polytechnic University on bridges and roads. Inside, the protesters are waiting, fearing a repeat of this. In the early hours of this morning, police raided part of the campus. A tense standoff remains, though. Around 500 protesters have barricaded themselves in. Their food and water supplies are running low. They still have petrol bombs and other weapons, though. Just before 2 o'clock in the afternoon, one group tried to escape. So it's 1.45 and all of a sudden we hear tear gas and you look down and see a large crowd of protesters. They're basically making a run for it. I think there must be maybe a hundred of them. They came running out over the barriers. A large amount of tear gas fired down in their direction. The handful were arrested. The police say anyone leaving the campus will be charged with rioting. I would urge those rioters, do not try to escalate their level of weapon or violence, we have the capability. I will once again urge them to come out, surrender. The focus now, for the university at least, is to end this peacefully.
we have now received the assurance of police of a temporary suspension of the use of force under the condition that if the protesters do not initiate the use of force, the police will not initiate the use of force. The standoff continues though and supporters are streaming into the area around here in large numbers to provoke the police and to try to impede them. We heard that the, the student is inside, that they don't have food and no water, but they want to get out. This shows no sign of de-escalating, the opposite in fact. And the police are now sandwiched between protesters barricaded inside and their supporters outside on the march again. Robin Brandt, BBC News, Hong Kong. Well, with that as the backdrop, China's ambassador to the UK has said Beijing will not sit back if the situation in Hong Kong gets uncontrollable. He also condemned Britain for taking sides in the long-running dispute. The fragrant harbour is sliding into an abyss of chaos. The future of Hong Kong, if such situation continues, would be unimaginable, dreadful. I just want to show you the live pictures coming into us from Hong Kong because uh, that uh, the area that you saw in Robin Brandt's piece and uh, you can see just on the road there, uh, it's the road, uh, one of the roads leading up to the university, just the amount of bricks that uh, have been used, have been pulled clear, that we've been seeing uh, used as weapons during the course of the last little while. So uh, a quieter scene at the moment, but that standoff still continues with uh, the police surrounding the campus uh, university. Well, here in the next few minutes, we'll hear from one of the students who is barricaded inside the university. We'll also look at what action the international community should be taking. So as promised, let's return to Hong Kong, another day of terrible scenes and violence, this time centred around the Polytechnic University, where hundreds of students are barricaded inside, surrounded by riot police. Well, the police have told the protesters to surrender. Well, just a short while ago on this programme, I spoke to a student who's inside that university. He began by describing what the last 24 hours has been like. I mean, I have been trapped with my friend and uh, all those students, first aid and all those media trapped inside the, uh, the Polytechnic University for more than 30 hours. And our situation is we don't have the gas supplies and all those food is running out inside the canteen. I'm saying in the canteen. So uh, we cannot go and then we are trapped inside. That is an uh, unreasonable situation done by the police. Um, we've seen some students trying to escape. Have you tried yeah. to get away? Uh, in the morning, I have tried, but they they shoot those tear gas and uh, rubber bullet to force us to go back to the to the campus, and mm. we cannot escape. You talked about uh, the police tactics, but we've seen students using petrol bombs, bow and arrows. Bricks. I mean, uh, it's right. Can you blame the police for using rubber bullets and tear gas faced with with all of that? I mean, uh, all those is all those action is uh, starting from the uh, peaceful uh, protest, peaceful demonstration in Hong Kong. But later then, because the police force, uh, we don't have uh, the we don't have a, a, com a committee to to watch out the police uh, force and then which give us, um, which force us to increase our, our power. I mean, although we do, but I mean, the police is, is real time. I mean, let me ask you a final question, because China has been warning they won't sit by if Hong Kong becomes uncontrollable. How long are you prepared to stay in the university? Uh, the police have been saying you must surrender. Will you? Yeah. Uh, for me, I wouldn't surrender because I would rather stay in here with all my brothers because surrender is not us. It's, it's, it's a 
humanitarian crisis in in Hong Kong done by the police. So many, so many hurt and killed is 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 nonsense. So we will never surrender. Just one sentence. Uh, are you scared? Yeah, actually, I'm scared. I'm I'm still studying in university. I should be able to to hang out with my girlfriend to do study and and chill, but. But we can't. We just want to fight for freedom, you know. And right now, I don't know. I don't know where to go. You know, I've been trapped here for almost 40 hours, and and there's no 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 food, not enough food. And there's no people uh, for those supplies, you know. Well, that was one of the students talking to me just a short while ago. Well, Baroness Natalie Bennett is the co-chair of the UK parliamentary group Westminster Friends of Hong Kong. She says that she's alarmed by the developments. I think very, very disturbing and I think we have to think of that protester we've just been hearing from and the many hundreds of others and one of the reports I saw today was, was parents of estimated 100 school children, high school students who were there in those conditions and the parents of course are terrified for, for their, their safety of their children and they, you know, many of us around the world are seeing our young people out on the streets as climate strikers. There in Hong Kong we're seeing the same demographic group, the young people, they're fighting for the most sort of basic dem democratic rights and and freedoms that they have the right to expect. China's foreign ministry said earlier in the day no one should underestimate China's will to safeguard its sovereignty and Hong Kong's stability. How ominous uh, would you say warnings like that are and, and what should the international community be doing, do you think? Well, I think we have, particularly in Britain, have a particular responsibility. You know, we're parties to the joint declaration with China. That was something that was registered with the UN. It's an international treaty. We have responsibilities to stand up for the people who we handed over to Hong Kong all those years ago. Um, that agrees the one country, two systems arrangement. It's supposed to guarantee the rights of the people in Hong Kong, which are clearly you know, now under extreme threat. And in terms of the actual situation, I mean, there's a level of fear. I'm getting people contacting contacting me all the time, both through social media, by email. And, you know, they're deeply fearful. The kind of echoes of things, you know, the word Tiananmen, of course, keeps coming up again and again. And last night there was real fears about the potential that the Chinese army could be on the streets, could be attacking the Polytechnic University. Um, and there really is a responsibility for the whole international community, for the UK in particular, to speak up and say this is not acceptable behaviour. Except now, the Chinese, every time uh, the UK uh, does uh, inch towards that or makes a comment, uh, they are irritated, they uh, remind the UK this is Chinese territory. You talked about your concerns. It's interesting, I was reading among some of the protesters, they cite what is happening to the Uyghurs in China as part of the reason why they're not prepared to surrender, because if they do surrender now, they think that's where they end up. Well, there's huge fear. I mean, you, there's reports of up to a million people, Uyghurs, the Muslim minority, um, you know, who've locked up in re-education camps. T tales of you know, relatives from Western countries who are saying you know, relatives have just disappeared in China. There's no reports on where they are. They can't go to authorities, you know, do all the usual things you do, go to hospitals, go to the authorities, say, where are my relatives? Um, and people are just disappearing. And you know, we've also seen, I'm hearing lots of reports out of Hong Kong, um, there's a great deal of fear that very many unexplained apparent suicides. Bodies are being found on the streets and in apartment blocks in Hong Kong. And so the fear is absolutely well founded and understood. Uh, and I think we have to think that um, you know, this is a situation where the young people who are saying we want the rights we're supposed to be guaranteed by an international treaty, a treaty that Britain is a signatory to. Britain has every right to be speaking yep. out here and every responsibility to be speaking out. Hong Kong's battleground, the political stakes rise again, and so does the violence. Clashes on campus, students using petrol bombs, bricks and bow and arrows, police respond with rubber bullets and tear gas. A warning from China, Beijing will not sit back if the situation becomes uncontrollable. Some students make dangerous escapes as riot police surround the university and the standoff continues. For me, I wouldn't surrender because I would rather stay in here with all my brothers.
Hello and welcome to the programme. Each week is more violent than the last. Hong Kong has seen another day of battles between police and protesters with hundreds of students barricaded inside the Polytechnic University and riot police surrounding the campus. Well, these are the dramatic pictures from a couple of hours ago. Some of the students trying to escape, clambering down ropes, jumping on mopeds. The police have condemned the demonstrators for using petrol bombs, bricks and bow and arrows. They've responded with rubber bullets and tear gas. Robin Brandt reports now from Hong Kong. This is a university under siege and at times under attack. This the latest of numerous fires to take hold in the last 24 hours. Outside, the police have surrounded Polytechnic University on bridges and roads. Inside, the protesters are waiting, fearing a repeat of this. In the early hours of this morning, police raided part of the campus. A tense standoff remains, though. Around 500 protesters have barricaded themselves in. Their food and water supplies are running low. They still have petrol bombs and other weapons, though. Just before two o'clock in the afternoon, one group tried to escape. So it's 1.45 and all of a sudden we hear tear gas and you look down and see a large crowd of protesters. They're basically making a run for it. I think there must be maybe a hundred of them. They came running out over the barriers, a large amount of tear gas fired down in their direction. The handful were arrested. The police say anyone leaving the campus will be charged with rioting. I would urge those rioters, do not try to escalate their level of weapon or violence. We have the capability. I will once again urge them to come out, surrender. The focus now, for the university at least, is to end this peacefully. We have now received the assurance of police of a temporary suspension of the use of force under the condition that if the protesters do not initiate the use of force, the police will not initiate the use of force. The standoff continues, though, and supporters are streaming into the area around here in large numbers to provoke the police and to try to impede them. We heard that the, the student is inside, that they don't have food and no water, but they want to get out. This shows no sign of de-escalating, the opposite, in fact. And the police are now sandwiched between protesters barricaded inside and their supporters outside on the march again. Robin Brandt, BBC News, Hong Kong. Well, China's ambassador to the UK has said Beijing will not sit back if the situation in Hong Kong gets uncontrollable. He also condemned Britain for taking sides in the long-running dispute. The fragrant harbour is sliding into an abyss of chaos. The future of Hong Kong, if such situation continues, would be unimaginable, dreadful. Well, just a short while ago, I spoke to a student barricaded inside the Polytechnic University. He began by describing what the last 24 hours had been like. I mean, I have been trapped with my friend and uh, all those students, first A, and all those media trapped inside the, uh, the Polytechnic University for more than 30 hours. And our situation is we don't have the gas supplies and all those food is running out inside the canteen. I'm saying in the canteen. So uh, we cannot go and then we are trapped inside. That is an uh, unreasonable situation done by the police. Um, we've seen some students trying to escape. Have you tried yeah. to get away? Uh, in the morning, I have tried, but they, they shoot those tear gas and uh, rubber bullet to force us to go back to the, to the campus. And mm. we cannot escape. Let me ask you a final question, because China has been warning they won't sit by if Hong Kong becomes uncontrollable. How long are you prepared to stay in the university? Uh, the police have been saying you must surrender. Will you? Yeah. Uh, for me, I wouldn't surrender, because I would rather stay in here with all my brothers, because... 
surrender is not a is 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 a humanitarian crisis in in Hong Kong done by the police. So many, so many hurt and killed is 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 nonsense. So we will never surrender. Oh, 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 oh,